Howdy folks, it's Angel the Hunting Gear Guy, and this is a bag? Uh, no, this is a, a Marlin Papoose, or 70 PSS. It's a, it's a really neat little rifle that, uh, that Marlin's made, here we go. And uh, it comes in a bag. So this is a takedown tw uh, 22. Uh, we'll just take a look here. There's nothing in the magazine itself. And of course, our chamber is empty because it's locked open. And it comes in this handy little carry uh, package here. So we've got, let's see here. There's our barrel. So our barrel just comes on out of there. And then there's also a barrel wrench in the top there. So I'll just throw that guy off to the side. To assemble it, all we're doing here is taking that barrel, popping it in, tightening on this, uh, this barrel nut. This takes a little bit longer than the, uh, the 1022 takedown model, um, but it's also considerably cheaper than the 1022 model as well. And then we, if we want to, we can use this uh, barrel nut wrench to grab on to the little divot in there and just give it that extra little bit of tighten. Now, if you don't use the barrel wrench, I've found that it will loosen off after a few mags. It'll start to walking on this barrel nut. That's okay. Like if, if you're going to uh, take this thing out uh, grouse hunting or something like that, uh, you're going to make one or two shots most with it kind of a thing, right? So um, I found that that's uh, okay, acceptable by me. Um, a couple of other interesting things with it, because it's a, a based on the Marlin 795 uh, action, it's got this little uh, gas pedal bolt release here, so you can press that down to release the bolt. And of course, when the uh, last round is fired, it will lock open uh, to the rear here. So uh, a little bit interesting and something that you won't see on the 1022 and some of the other um, semi-auto 22s out there. Now the rear of this uh, Marlin Papoose is very simple. Uh, it's got no uh, add-on uh, butt plate. It's just the uh, uh, stock uh, molded itself. Now it does have this uh, this one that's inset uh, just to, uh, to cover the hole, I guess, that would be left from the molding process. Uh, some very basic um, uh, checkering that's kind of molded in here, nothing too fancy. Uh, kind of towards the top here, we've got a cross bolt safety. Nice and light on there. So there's safe and there's fire. And we can see that there's a red line uh, right there that's telling us that that thing's ready to fire. Uh, up over here, we've got our bolt release. The magazine release is kind of a weak part on these uh, on these Marlin 795s and papooses. It's a two-hand affair. So one hand has to kind of hold that down and the other hand has to release the magazine. This is the seven round magazine it came with, but they also sell 10 rounders uh, for these things as well. The uh, bolt release is uh, is right here and it's activated by using your right finger. So I'm just going to hold the bolt here so it doesn't slam forward, but pressing that does that. And the other interesting thing is that if you want to lock the bolt to the rear, you just pull on the bolt, push that guy up, and then it'll catch the bolt uh, as well. Uh, so a little bit of extra, uh, you know, mechanism on here to to use but uh, in the end result is that you don't have to do the AK-47 thing where you you know rack it back just to uh, just to drop the bolts down. Now on the barrel itself we've got the barrel nut and the uh, barrel stub here so this guy and it goes down here and screws onto the uh, onto the barrel. Uh, the rear sight is ramped so that you can uh, set it for distance. That'll be for setting it for more distance. This will be for setting it for less distance. Uh, the sight does fold down, uh, so you can kind of get it out of the way if you want to, and then it can pop back up very quickly. It's actually using the spring pressure of there to, uh, to hold it down and then deploy it out as well. Uh, nice, nice barrel, nice and stainless. Uh, then we get to the front here and we've got this hood covering up this uh, this plastic orange uh, front sight. Very high visibility, nice and low to the barrel uh, and uh, not too obtrusive. This sight's going to help protect that, uh, that plastic front sight there. And then just a very standard uh, front crown on here. Now to install them, just so I can do you, get, show you guys a close up here. We just pop them together like that. Ooh, let me actually lock that bolt to the rear so it's not applying pressure and then pop it just like that. And you can see that there, that uh, it butts up against it. There's this, this ring against it, so it butts up against it there. And then we screw it on with this guy. Now at first I thought this wrench was supposed to work with these little grooves in here, but it's actually supposed to use with these holes. And you're supposed to 
grab onto there. Am I tightening or loosening? Oh, I'm tightening. I'm good. <laughs> you grab onto the grooves there, and then you just give it a little extra uh, smidgen of love there, and it'll stay in and won't shoot loose as you're firing. I'll try to show you disassembly without shaking the table too much here, but let's just get those. There's two action screws, one at the front here and then one at the rear here. They're a bit of an odd size, so you might have to go through your tickle trunk of uh, Allen keys to find the correct head for it. So once those screws are off, you're going to need to drop the bolt down to give you a little bit more room here. So once that's done, you should be able to pull this, very carefully pull this off. This plastic at the right here does not have a lot of meat to it, so you don't want to be pushing on that too much. There's our trigger mechanism, and you can see there, oh, I've got the safety on, safety's off, and now it's going to move. That's kind of neat. And we should be able to pull our receiver off of the plastic. There we go. Not much to look at there for the uh, <laughs> the inside of the forehand because there isn't really much of one. And there's our receiver group for the uh, uh, Model 70 PSS or Papoose. Uh, very nice stainless. You can see we do have some blued steel in here as well, so this thing wouldn't be totally marine grade or whatever. <laughs> you wouldn't want to go out in the salty waves and, and get a, a bunch of garbage on this thing, but uh, pretty simple uh, mechanism inside here as well. Uh, we've got a couple of pins that hold this together. So right at the front here, we, this is kind of where it's like hinging on. And then at the back here, we've got a plastic one. It'll just push loose and then this whole mechanism will come out. So let me just show you how that works. There we go. There's a whole bunch of our mechanism. Now we've got access to the bolts and the single spring there. We can push this thing all the way to the rear, give ourselves a little bit of room, that'll pull this guy out, and then very carefully allow that bolt up and out. What we don't want to do is, uh, is bend this spring in here, because that can cause some issues. There we go. Now we've got the recoil spring and the bolt out uh, as well. That's why I got this thing out, I can show you guys. Here's this uh, rubber, very hard rubber uh, buffer at the rear, that's what the bolt is going to bear on uh, when it comes back and that way it won't it won't be hitting uh, steel or this uh, very light duty metal here. Now actually firing this rifle is uh, kind of fun. It's it's so light. There's like there's yeah there's not really much to grab onto out here so you end up holding it uh, kind of basically on the magazine there just short of it. Uh, I really like that uh, that front orange sight there. It's very easy to see, very easy to kind of pull in and, and pop down into the sight. The sights are kind of like a semi buckhorn kind of a sight which I don't really like those too much but it's okay. Uh, the trigger is fine, although there are some other uh, upgrades that you can make with, uh, I think it's like Macarbo or something like that, uh, that has upgrades for this uh, for this uh, rifle in the 795 series. Um, it does have like this sling stud up front here and on the back. This isn't really a lot to uh, to hang on to this thing, but I suppose if you if you really need to sling it, you could. Uh, the sights are uh, are well protected on the front here, so you're not going to knock those guys around. And if you need to adjust it for um, uh, elevation, of course, you can pop it up like that or pull this ramp sight down here at the back and that basically sets your elevation. So overall, should you buy a, a Marlin Papoose? Well, there's not really a lot of uh, takedown uh, 22s out there for, in terms of semi-autos. Uh, these guys are pretty inexpensive. They run a, a nice sta uh, stainless setup, so you're not going to uh, run into as many rusting issues. Uh, the biggest competition to this one will be the Ruger 1022 takedown. Uh, the cost is quite a bit more on the Ruger. Uh, there's also the AR7, uh, but that's not really as nice of a shooter. The AR7 is like fantastic if you're going to go boating and you need to like have something stored and just in case. But uh, actually shooting that rifle isn't quite as nice as uh, as shooting this guy, at least in my opinion. Um, you can and you can take a look at my video review of the AR7 here. Um, so overall. I, I love it like for for value for price for something to have uh, just in case you want to, uh, uh, to shoot a grouse or go out uh, small game hunting and uh, you're hunting with your big rifle as well and you want something nice and small to pack around definitely take a look at the Marlin Papoose. Thanks for watching.